Hello and welcome back everyone. We are live here at the Adobe Max in Los Angeles. It's incredible. This is the last uh, live stream of our conference, which is kind of sad, but also, you know, the best comes at the end. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Steph. Uh, I'm the XD evangelist for the UK. I'm based in London and I'm here in Los Angeles with Patricia. She's our UX um, creative resident for this year. Mm -hmm. Welcome, Patricia. How are you? Hi, Steph. Um, I am. I'm really well. I'm good. Yeah. yeah. Thanks You've for having me. been enjoying the conference. I'm doing. Yeah, a lot. It's uh, it's really exciting here. A lot of people. Um, I attended some really great sessions about like voice design and uh, about Adobe XD. So this is really fun. Yeah. If you guys out there in the chat have any questions uh, for me, let me know. I'll read them out uh, to Patricia, or even yes. if you have questions to me or about UX design. Um, let us know, this is your chance, and we will do our best to answer it for you. So, But let's get started to talk about you. What okay. is a creative resident? <laughs> That's a good question, and I get asked that a lot, to be yeah. honest. Um, so the creative residency is a year-long program. Oh, actually, you're seeing that on my screen. Um, where, the, where you have the opportunity to work on a project you're passionate about, and it's... They're supporting creatives out of different fields. It's like, I'm your XUI, but there are also people from like videography um, or photography or motion design. No, awesome, thank you for that. I'm going to expand that so you can see it even better. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's a really cool program. Um, it started in May, so I'm halfway through. I'm focusing on, like I said, UI UX. And my project is about future cities. So um, yeah, it's a really exciting time. You know, we're going to different conferences, meeting a lot of people. Um, so it's a really great opportunity, especially when you're just starting out with your career. Um, and yeah, you need you have a, something you're passionate about and you want to focus on for a year. And actually, um, they just uh, opened the application for the next year. So um, next May. I'm going to be done. Out of Adobe. Yeah, I'm going to be oh, out. Yeah, it's unbelievable. Um, so they're looking for like new people joining this awesome experience. Um, you have a stand here as well, right? We do. Yeah. Well, um, what did you do there? Um, first of all, we uh, we won workshops there, so you know we're getting a lot of support from Adobe, so we want to give something back. Um, so each of us run different workshops about different topics and um, I'm your XUI so uh, I did a workshop about your XUI and I focused on rapid UX research actually so all of us did some kind of a workshop um, workshop there so this was fun and a lot of people came by and said hello um, so yeah this and was pretty cool. what was the content of this workshop so it was about research and um, we created this uh, research card actually. Wow. Yeah, it's really, really fun. Like, uh, it's really pretty. Because like, what I experience in many of my projects, you know, what I'm working on or what I'm doing at the moment is that research is still a part, you know, which where is a lot of like opportunity to to do it even better and to integrate it more in your design process. So we created cards actually for our participants. It's um, me and Julie Sandusky did this together about, you know, it was like nine. Oh yeah, we can use the go. Oh. That's a, yeah. Um, how to um, can we see that? how to conduct research? How to write a research plan in the beginning? And yeah, finding participants and a lot about like knowledge. So yeah, it was really fun doing that. And the thing is that we we printed some backup uh, backup cards. So I still have some left. Turn it over. Turn it over. Like that. So we still have some left, um, and I was I was thinking, why not give some to you? So if you're interested in research and if you would like to, uh, yeah, get some more insights about that, uh, use those research cards to, yeah, to start with research, um, then, um, yeah. You have some to ship for our. Yes, viewers I have some left, so um, we were thinking about doing a little competition. Um, so if you want, you can find me on Instagram. I can show you here. 
And the only thing you need to do is actually to um, share a story with both of us um, during the live stream. And after the stream, I'm going to, or we're going to select uh, people and ship them to you, wherever you live, you know, all around the world. Just so. make sure you tag us. Yeah. So this is sure UI dot Patricia, and I'm Stephanie number four XD. So UX dot Patricia. UX dot Patricia. Yeah, yeah, but that's fine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm Stephanie number four XD. Uh, so make sure you tag us, mm -hmm. and then we will select people to mm -hmm. ship these beautiful cards to you so I hope you're getting excited yes. we have so many people in the chat already so oh my god welcome everyone um, we have Frias, Voodoo, Munir, Deb, Paulina, Marilyn, oh so many people Din, yeah Colby, awesome, <laughs> awesome. hello Hi. everyone, so hey, nice, everyone. <laughs> so nice really to cool. have you here, so cool um, Tell me a bit more about yourself. How did you become a UX designer? Mm -hmm. Did you study UX design? How did you start? Yeah, that, that's a good question actually, <laughs> because I, I studied graphic design, so my background is more um, in like print design kind of, you know? I studied graphic design, so we did a lot of like posters and print design and editorial stuff. Hence the beautiful but, cards. Yeah, now it's still, <laughs> I still, I'm it still, shows. It shows. I'm still enjoying it. <laughs> but after, um, after my studies, I realized that I, I want to focus more on research and building up concepts. And I really enjoyed working digitally and iterating all the time, um, building prototypes. Uh, I'm really into tech. Um, I started to learn code. And so I was, yeah, I was really, uh, yeah, I, I started to switch to UX, which was honestly really difficult in the beginning, especially because, you know, when you want to get a job, but you don't have any project in that area then might be difficult. So I started creating my own project, shared them on Behance um, and social media and got into the area. It was difficult in the beginning. That's the reason why I um, decided to share a lot of knowledge on Instagram. You know, like things I experienced, um, struggles I had, some tips and tricks I have um, to help others who want to get into, um, into the into UX actually. Yeah. That's brilliant. What would you say, how important is social media for a designer mm -hmm. or a UX designer in nowadays society? I mean, it definitely depends on which direction you are going. If you're, you know, if you're an employee in a big company, then it's probably not that important. But I used to work freelance and that's my goal after the residency as well, to work, to work freelance, um, to work with different clients and do different things. So, for me, social media is really important, and uh, like the, you, you know, the things I I really love most about it is actually you know you share stuff and you get feedback on that. You know, with Behance or, or like global, not that much honestly, <laughs> but Behance a lot. You get feedback, you share something, and then people write you messages or like rec recommend recommendations and those kind of things. So that's really awesome. And I got a lot of clients actually through social media, especially Behance. So they, they found me there and they texted me. So I got freelance projects through Behance. Which that's is awesome. Uh, yeah, that, that's really awesome. Um, and you, you applied for the residency with a project that you wanted mm -hmm. to do for the year? Yes. Um, do, you have, exactly. uh, do you have started that project or have you finished that project or is it more than one project? Has it changed? Yeah, that's, <laughs> Everything. A, good, that's a good question. Um, I mean, I applied with one project which was Future Cities, so I call it Future Cities. Um, so everything around the future of UX, kind of. Um, and like my goal was to divide the year in three, no, no, in three areas uh, and realize or uh, like design different projects um, of those areas. One was new living, so everything around your home, you know, smart living, then new work and mobility. That was the goal, you know, to work on each of those um, those topics for four months and uh, realized two projects I thought you know and have like eight weeks per project so I, I structured the whole year for the for the application but in the end I think it changed a lot honestly yeah. because you know I when I when I apply I even thought about like starting to vlog you know YouTube <laughs> and then at some point I realized okay I'm definitely not the vlogging kind of person you know I don't want to do that at all um, and I, I started a podcast, which I hadn't thought of before. At, at some point I thought, okay, it's awesome, you know, I'm, I'm meeting so many cool people, why not 
record that and then share it with, with people. Yeah. Where is your podcast? Where can people find it? Oh, yeah. It's on Spotify. Um, I already released two episodes, which is... Um, That's brilliant. Yes. Yeah, it's re it's really fun, and it was a real challenge for me actually. You know, like recording, yeah. and that's 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 a new medium again. Um, it's a podcast. It's called the future of your ex. Um, you have some people already entering your competition. Linda entered. Awesome. Cross. Hi, you're both beautiful. Thank you very much. <laughs> cool. That's your podcast. Yeah, Great. that's it. The future of your ex. Brilliant. So, um, so make sure to sign up to that as well if you're yeah, interested. Check it out. So this was something I, I did on the side, which I haven't planned in the beginning. And as well, you know, like I'm halfway through, but I'm still, I started with the living, like the topic of living, new living, and I'm still in that area. You know, I haven't switched to New York, uh, to, to new work because I, I don't know, like so many cool projects came up. At the moment I'm working uh, with a co-living space in Finland, which is awesome and super exciting for me. I, I did research with them, so I flew to Finland last week actually, and no, two weeks ago I thought, and did research with them, which is yeah, like, super exciting for me. So, uh, yeah. That's brilliant, that's awesome. Yes. We have a question from Peter. He's asking from your experience, do you consider UI and UX as a, se as a separate? Uh, if overlapping fields or a discipline that a single professional can master? No, I think um, you don't. You don't really have to. You don't really have to like uh, excel in both. Um, I think like most people just focus on one area, and they're still like I like to do both. You know, because I start with UI and then I switch to UX, and I'm I'm more like. A generalist, I would describe myself because I'm, I'm doing so many different things. But a lot of people are a little bit like skeptical and think like, why don't you focus on one thing? So, I mean, it depends. Um, it depends also on the roles there, you know. Definitely. And some people are, I know a lot of people who are really like super good UI designers, super good UX designers and some, you know, would like to do both. So it depends on what you want to do. But to answer your questions, you don't have to do both, actually. You don't have to do both, no. but there are definitely overlapping disciplines and you have to either work together or do it both yourself. Yes, either absolutely. Way. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, um, thanks for the question. Can you show us some of your projects that you have started, completed yes, already? Absolutely. I'm so. really curious to see them. I saw them already. Um, they're so pretty. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, so I am trying to upload most of my projects on Behance so uh, people can see it, check it out, maybe give me feedback or, you know, I can start some conversations with them. So that, that's the reason why I'm uploading most of them here. And I, I'm re I really like to work on more like futuristic uh, approaches, thinking about the future, thinking about solutions. Um, this was a project I did um, actually in a live stream in Germany. So I'm from Berlin, um, and it was about you know the problem with urbanization that we don't have a lot of space in our future cities, and you know where to get all the food. Um, and one of my ideas was to like grow it on on your rooftops. That's a nice idea. Yeah, and after the stream, I uh, I got a lot of messages from people who sent me uh, like articles about Paris and different in uh, Singapore where they actually doing that. Really? Which was, it, it was funny, yeah. Um, so I had the idea that drones would, would do all the like watering and the gardening and those kind of things. That's brilliant. So, yeah, it was you really designed fun. an app to monitor that. Yeah, to actually to you could like rent specific areas on the rooftops mm -hmm. and then decide what you want to grow there. So you have your own digital garden in your app, and you know when things are ready to harvest, you can say like, okay, pick it up, and then a drone comes and like gets it to your balcony or your window. That's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I would Get love it. dinner. <laughs> that would be so cool. Um, different kind of takeaway, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because in, in cities it's so difficult to grow your own fruits or vegetables. I don't know, like, I, I tried it like several times, but I don't really have a lot of space in my, on my balcony and, you know, they need a lot of light and rain and water. And, so I thought that's a cool idea. I do it too in London. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and it's you just, need sun, right? It's just so nice when you see them grow. It's like your baby, and then it's there, and but then it's sad when you eat it. <laughs> I really love plants. Yeah, I would like to have a huge garden somewhere, but it's it's difficult. A jungle. <laughs> a jungle. 
I mean, I would like to have that. It would be cool. <laughs> but in Berlin as well, it's difficult. Like most of the people don't really have access to a garden or like areas where they can actually like grow stuff. I think. So, um, so this was one of the the living things, you know, like future of cooking. And the the second one was also about cooking. And this okay. was a project I did. Um, I did a lot of research actually uh, in the beginning. You know, like analyze how people cook generally what kind of pain points I have, what kind of problems I have. So this was like a really interesting area actually to do research and uh, so I analyzed everything, like all the pain points, what they need, what kind of information they need. Because at the moment, you know, when you are cooking a new cookbook, you can either use a cookbook or you can use like one of those, you can use an, an app or something. But um, what, I, what I realized during the, um, during, during the research is that a lot of people are confused with like, uh, specific things they need to do meanwhile they need to uh, when to prepare different things they are not about like cleaning so I had a really like, a lot of really cool ideas actually and in the end um, I was thinking about a solution a little bit like I think that you can see it a little bit like beyond the screen so thinking about you know if everything is your screen how would people how would things actually look like so that you can see it a little bit you know oh, I just closed it so that's brilliant. Uh, yeah, I think yeah. It's well, a really it was nice fun. project and really futuristic. Was there um, on your path by doing that, creating that? Did you get to a point where you thought, oh, this is like goes in a completely wrong direction, and then you changed it? I mean, um, yeah. Sometimes I think with this not that much, but I definitely know that feeling. Um, you know, when you test things and you realize, oh, damn it, I had a really great idea, but people don't really get it. That's, mm. that, that definitely can happen. Um, Did it happen in the other project, the previous one mm, that you showed? Not that. Actually, it, um, I, yeah, I think I can talk about it a little bit because the co-living uh, project I'm working, um, working about at the moment, there, I had some really crazy ideas in the beginning because I haven't done research in the beginning, you know, because I, I, I just couldn't. So I just, just like interviews with friends or people I knew who, who lived in a co-living space, but not with them. So I had some interesting ideas and when I did the research last week, I realized, okay, this is like, this would never work, you know, like even like cultural things that, you know, this was a little bit too crazy. So yeah, this can always happen. And it was, I mean, then you adjust it. It's, it's all. It's. I mean, that's your ex. You know, you always iterate. It, so. it looks it's nice. Fun. I mean, you have a nice outcome. We have yeah. some questions here. Um, can people from Europe also apply for the residency? Yes. Um, Patricia is from Berlin. So if you live in Germany, I'm from London. If you live in the UK, you can apply. So both UK and uh, Germany are in the program. Um, Japan is also in the program, and US and Canada is in the program. So yes. summarize it, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> then yeah, we have another. We have another question. Uh, Cross is asking, how can I begin work as a UX designer? Do you have any tips? I mean, it depends on where you are in your career. Um, at first, I mean, what really helps is like to build a portfolio. You know, like have specific projects that clients see that you already have some work experience, that you know what you're doing. Um, I think that's like the first step. I don't know if you already have a portfolio, if you have something, or if you, uh, if the problem is more like finding clients, or um, what exactly is, because, you know, f first you need your projects, do a specific thing, starting with nothing. I had, you know, I, I had this problem, and you need to figure it out some, somehow. Um, well, the first step is definitely watching our live stream. That's a good start for you. <laughs> so well done. Then yeah. Behance obviously is a very inspiring platform, I would say, where you can really find a lot of UI kits. I also upload my files that you can download. I don't know if you upload yours, yes. but they're really helpful. So you can download Patricia's files, you can download my files um, and yeah. work with them and see how, how it goes and then just create your own. And um, Absolutely. Yeah, see, see how we do it. Um, we have another question from uh, Johnny, which is really interesting. Do I really need to know how to code to be a UI UX designer? And yeah. we have the answer. 
in our live stream today, so stay tuned. Like, <laughs> just stay in, we will show it to you live here. That's such a huge discussion, you know. I yeah. posted something on Instagram like one week ago and it was like a huge discussion about that. So really? it's always interesting, yes. But we will show that you don't need to code later. But I wanted to say uh, something you said earlier about like how to start because um, it depends on where you are in your career, but generally there are a lot of really great resources out there. You, you mentioned Behance and that's really helpful. You know, yeah. I, I used to watch a lot of live streams and it helped so much watching how other people like structure their work, how they do things, how they think. That's awesome. And there are also so many great books out there. There's so many inspiring people on Twitter and Instagram and you know, they're happy if you reach out to them and just say hi and ask them questions. So, you know, we are living in a digital age, so you can do everything, you know. You know, don't need to go to school or something. So, um, I mean, you, I mean, of course, you, you can, but you, you can learn so much just by going online, going to YouTube, Behance. But, but let's talk about something that's a lot more important than coding, which is Adobe XD. <laughs> what was your favorite? feature of um, Monday's mm -hmm. keynote in the morning. Yeah. Um, Have you guys watched it out there? Let me know if you watch a keynote from Monday morning and let me know what your favorite feature was. We really want to know. We're going to demo some today. Yes. Getting going excited. Be... <laughs> <laughs> um, so I am, I'm working mostly with Adobe XD actually. Yeah. So that's my main tool and sometimes a bit After Effects or Photoshop as well, but mostly Adobe XD. And Within my pro like my project was focused on future cities and like voice design and augmented reality and so so I did a lot of prototypes with voice design and one of the features they released is that you can add multiple interactions in, uh, on an artboard which is uh, which is awesome so like that means that you don't have one voice input but you can can set like different ones you know can we show that. Let's yes. demo that. Okay, let's let's dive, demo that. Let's dive into that and let's really show how it works. Because that's actually a really cool feature and that's a game changer, especially if you do like testing or, um, yeah, you know, these days everything is about prototyping and um, so and and testing. So that's a, cool that's a very pretty file. What project is this? Um, I actually uh, did a like did a dribble challenge. Um, last month or so for the community there I, um, I it was with Julie Julie is the other UX designer from Seattle um, we did a dribble challenge with the Adobe XD team about like our cities where we live and I created this app about Berlin of course and I came up with an interesting uh, idea with an interesting problem about mobility and designed that for the community so they could have that as a resource file and start their own ideas, but have like some kind of a backup. And the idea was, you know, I bought my first bike actually, like two months ago, which is crazy because I'm already like, not that young anymore. So I bought my first bike in Berlin. But you can cycle, we don't need to worry. I need, I can, I learned that as a child, you know. Okay. But Good. <laughs> I can, but it's still, you know, I was, it was it was it was crazy, you know. Like, I I I, um, I drove to the Adobe office and it was like kind of dangerous, you know. Like a lot of cars. I was so confused with like Google Maps and then finding the way and a lot of cars. And then I wanted to 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 change the route in the middle of the um, of the uh, of the drive. So this was I was just like, wow. Okay, there's some opportunity, you know. Like I could I could do something with that. So I did research about that. What do people actually need when they bike to uh, to a specific place? So, um, uh, what problems do they have? What information do they need? So it was interesting. I did some career interviews. I did some diary studies. So, um, and after that, um, I had some interesting insights, which were um, that people want to personalize their route. So they want to say, okay, this time I want to have like a really safe route where it's like nice and quiet. Sometimes they want the fastest route because they're just like you know they need to be somewhere on time or otherwise they want to like have a beautiful route if it's on the weekend and they want to see like some nice parks or so uh, yeah something like that so you can personalize the whole experience and also add specific things like add okay I want to add like a, uh, a coffee shop so I want to get a coffee on the way something like that and everything that's already is working prototype I mean yes I could can, can you play that how I'm, it is right now and then show us what okay. we can change since okay. the new update. So, 
that's a prototype. I'm not sure if it's linked cor correctly. But here you get some kind of a little onboarding and then you have the home screen. So where do you want to bike today? So you say where you want to bike and then select like um, what do you want to go? Like, oh, do you have like a fast route or a beautiful route or a really safe route? So this is what I would prefer in Berlin. Uh, <laughs> or like fit, it would be like a fitness route or something. Um, and, the, and the update did actually different things. Um, first, I mean, there are two things I, I personally really, I was really thrilled about to hear. First is the thing we, we just talked about, that you have multiple interactions, for example. How would you use those on these artboards? So, first of all, I'm already in the prototype mode, so, you know, this would be the design, so I'm in the prototype mode. And you can say, I'm having, like, this little icon, and then I can move it to somewhere which is like this. So I have also like a voice area so I can add specific voice inputs. Then I can add a specific trigger which would be, could be voice, could be a tap. Of course, it's, it's first of all it's a tap. And then I have a transition which would be like all animate. But the new thing about it is if I click on that, there is this little plus sign. And if I click on the plus sign, I can add another interaction here. Like, for example, on the same artboard, and, but this time I say it's voice. What would be the command? Like, I don't know, like start root, for example. Or I add another one, it would be like the second one. Say voice, it's like, um, uh, I want to bike to, I don't know, do you say that in English? Yeah. Let's bike to. I want to bike to. Cycle. We say cycle in the UK. I want to cycle. What do you say in the US? Maybe you can write it in the chat. <laughs> I would like to know <laughs> that. Um, so, and you, you, you know, you can add as many as you want. Like um, voice. And the cool thing here is that you see all your interactions here. So you can even add, you can add either add one here or the other one. So, start root. Or, you know, add another one. Oh. No. You, of course, need to link the right artboard. That's important. Then you have, like, different inputs. And you can see them by clicking on them. You know, first the start route, and that's we haven't defined that. That's by two, for example. And then it should work. Can and we you, test that? Yes. It's One ready. thing I have to say before we start that is my Adobe XD is in, um, is in German. Does it understand us? <laughs> I mean, it, it does. And it's, it's kind of funny because, um, you know, you can even like set a, a voice output and then it has like a really nice German accent. So it sounds <laughs> like me almost, which is kind of funny. Um, <laughs> Let's play that. I want to hear that. Okay. Do we have a... Um, a voice playback? Yes, we can we can do that. So I want to hear that. Okay. <laughs> so um, we have that voice input, and then we can say. So we connected that. Wait. Because here we said destination is voice input or animate. I mean, we don't need. We can say speech playback, and then it's um. Like, um, okay. Welcome I, to Berlin. Uh, oh yeah, welcome to Berlin. Okay, let's do that. And we can do that with all the other things we started here as well. So did someone respond in the, in the chat? Sorry? Did someone respond in the chat? If yeah, it's Colby basically? is saying, uh, we say bike. <laughs> okay, cool. We're in America, so that's fine. You can say bike. <laughs> so, let's, let's check if that works. I want to bike too. Oh, yeah, you need that. Maybe we need something. Could we hear that? I mean, maybe it was because it's really loud. Yeah, it's a bit noisy at a conference here. Because like, we are right in the middle of the community We're right pavilion. in the middle of the community Star pavilion. Okay, with awesome. loads of people and stands around us. <laughs> but we are staying focused. 
start route. Awesome. Okay, I connected the wrong app, or but it's working. <laughs> I mean, it's working. <laughs> With so many wire choices now, <laughs> after the update, that can happen too. But <laughs> the thing is, actually, you know, this is the old file. So since. Uh, Monday, you don't have to do that thing here anymore that you have like one outboard and like three others to show states mm -hmm. because they that's the another cool update they integrated states. So, how did you do it in the past? You did um, when the beautiful was selected, it, you had another artboard yes. for the selected version, yes. and then what was the third artboard? Uh, it's it's fit, so that okay. would be like that's another version of it, yes. So, and how you can even like Actually, you can even like um, select multiple, so like two or three at the same time. So you need to like you would have around like 30 outputs or so to cover all of that. You know, this was just a demo file, but which is a lot. And so, how would you do it now? Um, so, um, what I'm usually doing is like for all the designs I'm doing, or I'm creating like something like a like an area where I'm gathering like all my colors and icons and like tab bars or whatever I have. So I did this here as well, just with some, that's not all of them, but just some to show that. So that would be, you know, I already tried that out, so I'm going to delete that now. <laughs> um, so I can even do it with that. So you, you, First you go to the, no, you start, you stay, no, first you go in the design mode. You select all this, you make sure that it's a component. So, command K. And then you go in the prototype mode and that's really interesting actually that you can uh, now add multiple interactions. So it works like that. Um, so, first you have, oh wait. So, wait. So, you click here on the interaction and then you select. You select, let me check. Tap beautiful, that's right. So, it's a component. Um, and. Check the false state. Yeah, that's true. So um, you stay in the design area and not in the prototype thing. That's actually interesting because, yeah, so I was just looking for it in the prototype area. And here you create um, like different states. You already have your state, which is could be like the default state. But then you have a selected state. So this would be like, um, beautiful and select it and how would that look um, there we you know we would just the right or whatever we want you know there you could even integrate another component whatever fits there and if you switch between those you see that Everything and you can even like um, set it like beautiful. Um, another thing, for example, um, disabled. You know, if if there's just no beautiful route, you know, <laughs> this wouldn't happen in Berlin, of course. Uh, of course, no. <laughs> just kidding. It could be like something like oh, it's not selected. So I'll make sure that you select the right one and then something like add right. It's like four percent, like that. Okay. So we have three different states in just one component right now. Yes, and that's actually really cool because uh, when we go to the prototype mode, and oh, and you just select the right one. That's important. And you click on. on What's also important is I just made this as a component uh, uh, to a component. So this, as you see, is not a component. So make sure that you're using the same one here as well. So you need to delete that. 
interesting thing is actually when I'm designing, I don't know how, how you do that, but I am, um, I am always starting with like different versions, different areas, and when I'm happy with one, then I'm starting to create components. So I'm not starting with it um, at the beginning, but that's a personal thing. But now you have yours and you can drag it in just from the components yeah. panel. But I would like to know, like, how do you in the chat do that? Do you, uh, do you always create components in the beginning or do you like start a little bit like messy and then create components after that? That I would, I would really Questions love to. for you guys. Do you create components right at the start or do you create them more towards the end or in the middle of your project? It would be so interesting. We have a question from Munir, how to find a UI UX mentor that help you improve and sharp your skills. Good question. Oh, that's an amazing question. <laughs> that you have too, right? <laughs> um, that's a really good question because this is something that really um, helps, you, helps you grow. And this, um, I mean, there are several like, platforms and like, programs online where you can look for someone. I forgot the name, sadly. I'm going to post it later on Instagram when I'm, when I'm remembering that. Um, but there, that's a, that's an opportunity, and the other one is as well um, that you, if you have someone in mind who would be a great fit, then just reach out to them. But not like I need that, I need that. More like you know, starting with a nice conversation, asking maybe something. You know, um, don't be too demanding or something. Uh, that's something. You know, they are really busy, so be nice. Ask questions you have, um, and don't stop with, please be, be my mentor or something, because people are going to freak out if, if you ask them that. So, better Monia, start. Monia is asking, love the design of the app and illustrations, did you make them? Oh, that's a really good question. Like, <laughs> I did the design, but I found the illustration actually on Adobe Stock. Just have a look. Like there are a lot of um, illustrative files up there, right? Yes. Yeah. SVGs. Yeah. 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 And you can Not adjust only them. pictures. And use them. So they're like, you can use them in your designs. Which is yeah. Brilliant. Yeah. I was looking through it because I thought, okay, I can do it myself, but I can also use, you know, something which is already online to just save time. Um, so check it out. I was really surprised finding, and they have a really like a lot of really cool things actually. Johnny is saying, play Despacito. We have to make Rapido because we only have 15 minutes left, so we won't be playing Despacito. <laughs> Sorry to disappoint you. Okay. Um, Colby is saying, I usually work pretty messy and add components over time. So you're not the only one. <laughs> That's cool. Um, just Jarv is asking, do you need to vectorize things to be able to put on a prototype? Not necessarily. No. You can add uh, PNGs, JPEGs, um, and illustrations, obviously. So vector graphics, you can copy and paste them across from Illustrator. You can um, import SVG files. Yeah, there's a lot of compati compatibility. Um, if you also want to open Photoshop files, you can even open Photoshop files in XD. You can open Illustrator files, you can place them. So no, it doesn't have to be. There are a yeah. lot of other options. Um. Yeah, definitely. It depends on the, on the size, like, right? It's yeah, file size is yeah. always <laughs> an issue. Do we have a working? Wow! So, do you see that? How That's cool so brilliant! Is that? That's so amazing! And then this is just like one artboard, and I don't know if you saw that. But... Um, so I just um, edited... Oh, like, uh, I only need one artboard to switch between those two, because it's like, uh, how do you say? Hidden in one, uh, in one of it's those. In one component. Component. It's yeah, in one component. Yeah, so you only need one. It's hover states. So, um, and you can do that with all of them, which is really cool. Um, what so do you think about co-editing? Oh yeah, that's another game changer. Actually, um, that's a cool thing. I mean, we can try something really quick. Yes. Um, you know, for example, if I have a root here, but I want to. Um, like integrate uh, something else uh, here as well, which could be like you know adding a coffee spot, for example. Um, and this is something we could um, treat about like voice could be like add coffee, add coffee, auto animate, awesome Good one. Okay, so let's try that. Do you need a coffee icon? 
Um, yeah, that would actually be a really cool idea. To I add can give you one icon. if you share the file with me. <laughs> Let's, Let's try do that. that. I am going to. So, uh, to do that, I need to do several things. First, is at the moment I'm uh, saved it locally. So, what I need to do now is to save it in the cloud. So, um, so there you can see it. It's, I'm going to save it in the cloud, uh, cloud now. Here it saves. And after that, I can add multiple like, um, colleagues or people to work on the same file, which is really cool. Um, but now it's just me. So I'm going to add you really quick. There you are. I also want to mention the brilliant feature that if you share that with me, it should show up on my phone because we also have the XD mobile app where you can play all your prototypes. Look at that. Oh, can we see that? Alert. Patricia shared Adobe Max with me. That's brilliant. Awesome. So let me take a look here. On my XD. Cool. It's still loading. I switch it off and on again. Yeah, uh, like a coffee icon would be really cool. It's for sure on my phone already, which is cool. I mean, it's saving, so. Oh, is it? But you're 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 definitely in the list now. So yeah, the, your attention, it's definitely on my phone. Okay. We are getting kicked <laughs> out. That's so sad. So before um, before we're going to check this out, I'm going to test if that's going to work. So one of the ideas was that you can like add with like your earpods or something specific stops in the middle. Could be like I want to go, I want to grab a coffee on the way, or uh, I want to like have lunch or meet this pe person or whatever. You know, just adjust it. So let's check how this would work. I got it. I got your file. Awesome. Our Wi-Fi is a little bit slow, but here it is. So I'm coming. Be prepared. <laughs> you will see when I'm when I will have arrived, right? Because my icon will just pop up in yours. Oh, yeah, that's true. And you're here in mine. Look at this. See you. Here's Patricia. Nice. You should see me, right? Yeah, I see you. You're here. So I'm here. I see you. Cool. So let me give you um, that icon. So. I really I love plugins. There's, it's also one of the new features. We have a new plugin interface, um, which I really like. So if you want to um, get quicker processes in your designs, uh, try out the plugins. Now you can browse and they're really categorized such as this one, which, which is just brilliant. So I really like the Icons for Design plugin. It's already installed. Um, if you haven't installed it, um, I recommend doing that. Mm -hmm. So what I can do is if I, on which iPad do you want your coffee cup? Mm, it would be cool on like the root one iPad. Root one, the last yeah. One, yeah. I would like okay. to put so, it like in the tab there. So I select this one, then I'm going to icons for design and I'm searching for coffee. So let's Something imagine like you are in Berlin and I'm in London and I don't know which one you like. So um, icons for design, they search awesome icons, they search feather icons and simple icons. There's also Google material design icons in them and they're all vector graphics, so mm -hmm. I really love that. So if I don't know which one you like, so all I do is I select the artboard and I click on all these coffee cups that it gives me and ask you in a chat, which one do you like most? Does it show up already? I think it's still saving. Ah, interesting. Ah, there's yours, okay. Here's mine, yeah. Oh. Did you get the coffee already? There, there I got. I got a. Um, there's a new owner version of this document, and I need to because I'm the owner. I need to accept the changes. 
and I'm just doing that. Except changes again. There they are. You got Ooh, my that's coffee. cool. Yeah. I like yeah. this one. That's cool. Yeah. So you can easily one. just delete the others, right? Yeah, I just it's very quick. And what I could do is, which is a very common use case, if you have done um, the, the mobile design, I could do the web design. Mm -hmm. So I'm just grabbing your home screen for a moment. And you keep working in yours with the coffee, I keep working in mine. So let's switch to mine and uh, show responsive resize. It's an older feature, but I really love it. Uh, because it's so quick. So Patricia has designed this mobile app. Um, I'm not into that file at all, but I have to create a web version out of it. What am I going to do? This is going to take me an age. But no, it's not. We have responsive resize. All you do is you switch it on, and I just pull out this artboard to a 1920 size. And pull it down. And in the meantime, don't forget to participate in the challenge. There's still time. So if yeah. you want to have a research kit, uh, Good call. just check us in, the, in your stories on Instagram. It's not too late. And we still have some left. So Now I have a giant uh, board here. The cool thing about responsive resize is also you can apply it to components or um, objects. So if I don't like that, I just turn it down and can center it. You see how easily and smooth it snaps. So. That's really pretty. Mm -hmm. um, and I have pretty much already a web design, right? It looks almost like one. I mean, a little bit here and there, a few things, and maybe move the sun to the middle or something like that, and the logo, um, which is a component as well, I guess. Yep. So maybe I move the logo to the middle with these alignment tools. And switch off responsive free size and make it bigger and have this one as a point text, center it. It's a little bit of a big bike now. <laughs> make it smaller. Yeah, but looks almost like a web design, right? I, th I think you see where I'm going. Um, so now I have this web size, which is 1920 and 180. We have a new shared um, mode here as well. So share is now on the left hand side as a third tab. And I can create um, a link here. So I think you need to accept the changes so I can create that link. Oh, true. Because <laughs> you're the owner. <laughs> and once you have accepted it, I can share it. Can you share it? I don't know. I need to check that. Can you go in share mode? Oh, yeah, true. Um, Maybe because I created it. Link. But it's creating a link. It is? It's creating a awesome. public link. I think all you have to do now is just click on the link and then it should open in your web browser. Yeah, right. Brilliant, right? Mm -hmm. The new Very share cool. functionality is all in one place, which I really like. Hello. <laughs> but let me show you another plugin yeah. just before we have to finish. Um, so I created, a, let's go back in design mode on my screen, and I created this web format. There's this plugin called Web Export. So if I say export artboard, and I just say export and save it on my desktop, amongst a million of other things that you will soon see, here it has created it. So here I have an HTML file, and in order to show that to you that you believe me, it's really an HTML file, I'm going to open it in Dreamweaver. And you can see here is a whole bunch of code. So this is really HTML. Um, it's not the prototype mode anymore. I can also just open it in my browser. And you can see when I go, for example, in Google Chrome and say um, inspect, you can see it's all code. 
I love that plugin because I get this question so much from you guys mm -hmm. out there. Um, yeah. And yeah, there is a plugin. Um, you can change the code up here, uh, but in in a minute, I have just turned yeah. your beautiful app design in something that looks a little bit like a web design. Not as beautiful as yours, but oh, good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but we don't have much time, so this is the best I could do. But I have yeah, I have an HTML code. That's awesome. That's really helpful. Yeah, isn't it? Yes. Oh, and I have to accept changes. And even like have that as a basis, and then like add some like CSS or JavaScript or whatever, right? Like yeah. CSS, you probably wouldn't. Yeah, cool. That's Brilliant. awesome. Oh my god, we have so many people in the chat who were watching us and we have come up to time. Like time flies so much at Max. I mean, we've been here since Saturday and it's already over. I mean, it's sad, but um, thank you all so much for watching. Yes. I hope you enjoyed the stream. I hope you enjoyed the whole Max stream. And um, Adobe Life is back next week from San Francisco with these guys down there. We're going back to Europe. Um, if you want to follow us on Instagram, on Behance, please do that. This is yes. UX.Patricia and I'm Stephanie for XD. So thank you all very much for watching. Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye.